Big open world games are a dime a dozen now at this point, right? Well, today we wanted to narrow it down to 20 open world shooters. You know, games where you just run around, shoot stuff, make stuff explode, have some fun. So today we got 20 random games that we just wanted to talk about in no particular order. Some newer stuff, uh, some games from a couple of years ago that just we don't really talk about too much anymore. Anyway, let's get started off with number 20 and talk Rage 2. Now, Rage 2 felt like a big shift from the first game. The first game was very Mad Max, post-apocalyptic, but it took itself pretty seriously. It was dingy, it was brown, it was gray. It was a fun shooter, but Rage 2 went off the rails with it. It opened up the world to just give you a lot more to do, a lot more of powers and abilities, and more over-the-top weapons and enemy factions, and it worked to pretty good effect. This game doesn't really get brought up a lot these days, but it was really fun, simply because it knew what it was and it wasn't trying to do anything crazy. It was just a zany open world shooter. You play it single player, you have a good time, and you move on. Not every game needs to reinvent the wheel, change the world, or anything like that, and Rage 2 was a perfect example of just flawed but pure distilled video game shooter fun. Now, next over at number 19, we have Tom Clancy's The Division 2. Now, despite it being a live service game, you know, an updated online multiplayer game, this is just a fun open world game to run around and shoot bad guys in. In The Division 2, uh, the setting shifts from New York to Washington, D.C., where it's completely post-apocalyptic status, but very fresh, like the world just ended. I'm glossing over a lot, but th that's all you really need to know here. Uh, while, when you run around a real really eerily accurate recreation of Washington, D.C. Uh, the developers behind this and, of course, the first game just really know how to build worlds that feel really convincing. It feels like they're real places, but then they fill it with a bunch of video game stuff. So you're running, gunning, looting, and shooting here, and even though it does have those live service elements, I had a lot of fun just running around solo in this world, doing quests, collecting loot, leveling up, shooting up bad guys. I still think it's worth it, honestly. I don't know where the Division series or franchise is going, but The Division 1 and 2 are pretty solid. And bottom line, the point of this list, they're just cool open worlds to run around in and explore. Next over at number 18, we have The Outer Worlds. This was Obsidian's big sci-fi RPG. They had kind of mastered this first-person shooter open world RPG style game thanks to working on things like Fallout New Vegas, and they kind of took what they did there and applied it to their own new unique IP, you know, their own new worlds, characters, alien life forms. And with that, you just get a bunch of cool little planets to explore. The Outer Worlds really doesn't feel like what you think it is. You think, oh, okay, it's space sci-fi RPG, right? There's a lot of things that usually come with that, but The Outer Worlds manage to feel consistently different and fresh throughout, while also still giving you that feel of an Obsidian RPG. An updated version of it was recently released, uh, like the Spacer's Choice Edition, so if you haven't gotten into it, now is still a good time. The Outer Worlds is cool. Next over number 17, we have the Sniper Elite series. I'd say the most recent one, Sniper Elite 4 and Sniper Elite 5, really open things up. They're not complete open worlds, but they are massive, massive levels that you can spend a lot of time in. Like, they, they feel like open worlds. You know, it's something like a Hitman game where it's a sandbox and you're dropped in and you have to accomplish your missions. But unlike the Hitman games, these levels are absolutely ginormous. You're using all of your tools, you're stealthing around, you're scouting the environments. You're, of course, sneaking around, stealth killing enemies, doing all that. But really, the bottom line is to find a good perch, find a good vantage point, and be a sniper and snipe the bad guys and make their brains and bones explode. You've probably seen these clips by now. You know these games are famous for the x-ray vision, but that sniper shooting is only the half of it. There's a lot of just like open world third person shooting to be had here, and it's a lot of fun. These games have always had a ton of personality, I'd say way more than you even expect, so it's best to just go in blind and try one of these for yourself. Next over at number 16, we have Atomic Heart. This was a very unique game. It's open world, yes, but it's structured around more linear levels. But in between those levels, you do have a really, really strange world to explore. Uh, Atomic Heart is kind of hard to describe at this point. It's kind of like alternate history, sci-fi, mixed a little bit with like the Bioshock feel, but definitely more of its own thing. This is definitely a flawed game. It's not perfect, but again, it is unique, and at least it's got some memorable stuff to it. 
it. So even if it does some things wrong, it swings for the fences and tries a lot of cool stuff. Shooting the bad guys are fun. The enemies here, some of them are really remarkable. Some of the bosses are pretty over the top. And the world you can explore is gorgeous and eerie at the same time. This one released and then kind of flew under the radar, but I figured it was worth giving it a mention again because it is definitely special. Next over at number 15, we have Ghost Recon Wildlands. Now, just as a refresher, the most recent Ghost Recon game is Ghost Recon Breakpoint, and before that, there was Ghost Recon Wildlands, which was actually pretty solid, especially after release. They updated the game, they added a lot of cool things to it, and it's had a great community that has really kind of buckled down and figured out the best ways to tune and optimize and play this game. And what you get when Ghost Recon Wildlands is at its best is just good, fun, tactical third person shooting, but in an open world setting. Vehicles on the ground, vehicles in the air, a lot of cool weapons, and a bunch of stuff you can do either alone or with friends. It's a surprisingly big open world, but the most important thing is that the third person shooting and movement was fun and satisfying. These games definitely aren't really like the old Ghost Recon games, but they are still a total blast, especially in hindsight. There's not really any other games releasing like these right now. Next over at number 14, we have Starfield. This is Bethesda's most recent game, and it's a space adventure RPG. It's something like a Skyrim, but in space. I know that's pretty reductive, but that's what it is. It certainly feels like a Bethesda game, and you're either gonna love that or hate that, but the game gives you a bunch of planets to explore, cool towns, and tons of missions and weapons. You know, it's big open areas where you run around, explore, and shoot stuff, either aliens, creatures, or bad men. And I think the shooting actually feels pretty decent and responsive here, at least for this type of game. And when you're zipping around on jetpacks, using all your abilities, there is some fun to be had here. I know this game has been pretty divisive, but it seems like people are still having fun with it, so we figured we'd mention it here because we did a few videos on it when it released, but then we kind of moved on. But there are people out there still playing it, and it's still probably worth checking out if you're into this type of thing, if you know what you're getting into. Next over at number 13, we have Stalker, the Legends of the Zone Trilogy. Now, you probably have heard of Stalker, but you may not have heard of the Legends of the Zone Trilogy, and that's because this is the recently released collection of the original Stalker games, but now available on console. So console players can experience the, the you know, very groundbreaking first-person shooters that really, I'd say, changed things on PC. These were significant for a reason, and I'm really excited we're getting another Stalker game soon, but the original Stalker games were fun, open world survival shooters in a post-apocalyptic landscape with their own real different unique feel to it. It's got its own unique hook. Of course, it's got this like Chernobyl-esque setting, but there's a lot more to it under the hood. And these games are worth checking out. If you just get this trilogy, at least play the first one at the very least and see what you think. But the Stalker games are truly something special. Next over at number 12, we're, we're keeping a similar theme here with Metro Exodus. The most recent Metro game is the most open one. You have big open areas to explore, all being kind of unique biomes. So it gives the game a lot of variety. But these areas are surprisingly big and you're running around these post-apocalyptic landscapes, looting, shooting, questing, and surviving. This Metro game to me felt very different from the original two, but it, it's still worth highlighting. I don't think it gets enough love, but there's a lot Lot of cool shit going on in it. Some really cool enemy encounters, some great environments, some scary and very tense moments, and just good old fashioned Metro style surviving in the dark. I was worried when they were taking the Metro series and kind of making it a bit more open worldy, but uh, with this, I'm glad it really worked out. Next over at number 11, Far Cry 5. Remember Far Cry 5? I feel like for us, it kind of came and went, we played it, we moved on, but Far Cry 5, looking back, actually kind of cool. It's a very unique direction for the series. And even if the story and the villains and stuff kind of jumped the shark towards the end, it did have some memorable moments. And, and really, the setting of the United States really just made for a very unique Far Cry experience. Especially jumping back into the game now with stuff added into it, and maybe with some mods, it can actually be a blast. Far Cry 6 definitely changed some things up, but it still felt like more Far Cry. But Far Cry 5 felt felt like it was trying to go a little bit in a different direction. I don't think it totally nailed that, but still what we got here is a big open world fun shooting game. And that's the point of this list, right? 
Now, moving on over to number 10, we're going somewhere totally different with Fallout New Vegas. Yeah, we had to mention Fallout once on this list because they are open world games and they're shooters, so it, it makes sense. But Fallout New Vegas is really special because it's Obsidian. It's not Bethesda, so it's got a really different, unique flavor to it. The quest, dialogue, writing, all that stuff is just on fire, like out of this world, interesting and compelling. And even though the game, especially at launch, was kind of ugly looking and, and glitchy, it really didn't matter because the core gameplay and the quests and all that stuff, the RPG-ness, was so much fun. It was just so interesting, and it made for a very unique, different flavor of Fallout that people really, really responded to. Fallout Fever is once again at an all-time high with the popularity of the television show, a lot of people jumping into Fallout 4 for the first time, but New Vegas is the one you should definitely check out. Next at number 9, we have Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, we had to include this because if we missed it, some people would yell at us, but it's kind of an obvious inclusion. It's a massive open world shooter. It, it's very much an RPG. It's not always guns blazing, but there's a lot of fun to be had in Night City, and especially with the game's expansion. It adds more to that world and so much more to do. It's a lot of fun. This game is finally absolutely solid, and it's a damn good one. A very unique setting, a very unique vibe. Nothing else quite like this out there in video game land. We're really glad that the developers CD Projekt Red righted the ship with this one, so to speak. Next over number eight, we have Mad Max. Yeah, that's right, I'm bringing up Mad Max. I know it's like barely a shooter because ammunition is very limited in this game, but damn it, I'm using this opportunity to talk about it. This is a great open world game. It has a lot of open world stuff to keep you busy, but it's all centered around the Mad Max desert wasteland. So you're driving around in a car, you're upgrading your car, you're engaging in high speed car combat, destroying other enemies' cars, ripping them apart with harpoons, knocking them off cliffs, all kinds of tricks, and it is so much fun. On the ground, you're running around, you're exploring, and you're getting into fights with hand-to-hand -hand combat, kind of like Arkham-style combat, but Max also has this trusty boomstick which you can whip out in a pinch and blow away some dudes. So yeah, technically I'm counting it as a shooter, but either way, it's a good open world game. Next over at number seven, we're going back a bit once again with the Crisis series. Yeah, looking back, Crisis 1, 2, and 3 are good open world shooters. All three of them kind of provide their own different flavor and their own different flaws, but there is absolutely fun to be had here because the worlds just allow a bunch of chaos, whether it's like the enemy encounters to the amount of explosive barrels or opportunities for stealth. They were good playgrounds to make you feel like a super powered badass, like your suit really is like the ultimate weapon. And they totally nailed that. I'm really curious to see where this series is gonna go. Years ago, they announced that they are making another one. We haven't heard a thing since. I really hope this series continues and really kind of freshens things up a little bit. But those original three games had a lot of really cool moments in them. Next over at number six, we have Prey. This is Arcane's really underrated immersive sim adventure game. This is a very unique sci-fi first person shooter set in a space station that kind of opens up as you adventure through it and ultimately becomes a big open playable area or world. It's all about exploring, getting to the bottom of this mystery, but you're engaging in some really, really cool enemy encounters. Like the way you're blasting and shooting enemies are, are different than any other game on this list because of the enemy type. You know, they're all kind of based around being mimics. Uh, but along with that, just some clever use of weapons and abilities. Make it feel like a bit of a different shooter. Either way, if you like these types of games, maybe you like Dishonored or maybe you like Deus Ex, you should definitely consider Prey if you never got around to it. Plus, the Prey Moon Crash DLC is also really great. You got a lot of good game here. Next over at number five, another obvious one, it's Red Dead Redemption 2. What more can be said about Red Dead Redemption 2 at this point? I honestly don't know. But if you're looking for an open world shooter with a ton of freedom, you get that here. You can run around and fulfill your rootin' tootin' cowboy dreams. You wanna save people, you wanna gun everyone down, get into every shootout possible, you can do that. The fact that this game has that degree of fun, open world shooty bang bang, while also telling a very subtle, introspective, character-based story is nothing short of incredible. I don't know how this game walks that tightrope so well. I don't know what kind of black magic or dark arts Rockstar is engaging in, but yeah, obviously by now you probably know Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of the great ones. 
Next over at number four, believe it or not, we have Borderlands 2. Dude, go back and replay Borderlands 2. I don't know if it was Borderlands 3, which I didn't hate, but it just didn't leave a lasting impression on me. Looking back at Borderlands 2, it, it still holds up. It's a solid, fun, open world shooter with a ton of stuff to do alone or with friends with crazy weapons. And then also all the DLC and all the stuff they added on top of this game makes it just like a juggernaut of a shooter. I'm not even like a diehard Borderlands fan, like a freak or anything like that, but I still look back at Borderlands 2 and I'm just amazed by how fun and how special that game really was. Next over at number three, we have Just Cause. If we're talking open world shooters, you have to mention Just Cause, right? I, I don't know which one to even nail down, maybe three, four, whatever your flavor really is. These games are so fun to just run around and cause havoc. All kinds of crazy weapons and stuff, but also your grappling hook, allowing you to fly, flip, glide, hijack helicopters, cars, all at high speeds, while bullets are flying, rockets are flying, and <laughs> you're just going nuts. Of course, you play as Rico, and there's more to do on the ground. There's a story, there's quests and stuff like that. But for me, it's always just hijacking an airplane, flying it up as high as you can, riding on top of it like a surfboard, and then skydiving away. Or stealing a car and backflipping off of a bridge and then wing suiting down to an enemy base and shooting it with a rocket launcher. Like there's just so much crazy shit you can do in this game. In terms of open world shooters, I think this is one of the most chaotic ones on the list. Now at number two, we gotta give some love to Days Gone. What an awesome open world third person shooter centered around a motorcycle. This is your way of getting around. You need to protect this thing. You need to gas it up. And it is probably your most important tool for survival. I mean, melee weapons and guns, yes, of course. But the bike is the most fun aspect. It makes this open world feel different because you can zip around it at high speeds. But when you are on the ground, Deacon is a really dangerous, formidable character. And you get to murder a lot of dudes, but also hordes and hordes of zombies or uh, they're called like freakers here. But, you know, engaging in some of those big set piece moments with the hordes of zombies is just so cool to see in action. It makes the game stand out next to your regular, typical, you know, post-apocalyptic zombie game. The world here is pretty big. There's a lot to explore. There's a lot of stuff to find, but really it tells a good story. It's a good adventure and the gameplay mechanics are a blast. Now, down at number one, we have Grand Theft Auto V. If we were gonna talk about open world shooters, this is the open world shooter. I mean, if you ask me, it's actually Grand Theft Auto 4, but I'm a little bit of a snob there. Either way, we're talking about the latest and greatest, and it's Grand Theft Auto 5. And by latest and greatest, I mean, this game is like 100 years old now at this point. Finally, we're getting Grand Theft Auto 6 somewhat soon, but the staying power of Grand Theft Auto 5 is nothing short of historic because it built this massive fake Los Angeles, because it built this massive fake Los Angeles, or of course, Los Santos, uh, for you to just run around and cause hell in. Whether you're doing the single player stuff or GTA Online, or you're getting freaky with some mods, there's just so much fun to be had here. I, we've talked about this game to death at this point, but it was another one we had to include on a list like this because you guys would have yelled at us. Still, with the world of gaming news and the gaming industry and all the negative headlines and stuff, it seems like a downer. Sometimes it's good to just take a look back and, you know, just make a list of some awesome games. And that's all we wanted to do here today. So we want to hear from you guys in the comments. What open world shooters have you been loving? The open world doesn't have to be the biggest open world, but, you know, if you're running around, you have freedom and you're blowing stuff up, what game do you really love? I mean, there's plenty we didn't cover from like the Crackdown games to the infamous games, which are kind of shooters, but I don't know. There's so much we can talk about. So let us know in the comments some of your picks. But if you like this video and you just like talking games with us every day, clicking the like button's all you gotta do. It really helps us out. And if you're new, consider subscribing because we put out videos every single day. But either way, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.